Michelle Miller from CBS Saturday Morning. Welcome to The Dish. Many cities across the world have an abundance of outstanding restaurants, and New York City, of course, is no exception. Today, we explore three amazing eateries in Manhattan. We start at Rockefeller Center, where a husband and wife duo are serving up traditional Korean dishes in a sleek, modern setting. Then we'll head downtown to Soho and catch a fresh bite at what many say is one of the most iconic seafood restaurants in the five boroughs. But we start in the West Village at a restaurant inspired by the Shakers, an early American religious community. It was founded in 2021 by two chefs who know a thing or two about running successful establishments. Wives Rita Sodi and Jody Williams carefully oversee every detail at the Commerce Inn. Nancy Chin has more. When you told people that you'd be opening a Shaker-inspired restaurant, what was their reaction? What? <laughs> <laughs> a natural response, given what celebrated chefs Jody Williams and Rita Sodi have taken on. Their most recent endeavor, the Commerce Inn, is influenced by a religious movement founded in the 18th century. It's better known today for its craftsmanship and architecture than its cuisine, but the couple's track record speaks for itself. We make places we want to we want to be in. We want to yeah. sit and eat and drink in. Williams and Sodi are behind some of Manhattan's most talked about establishments, including Via Corota, a trattoria dubbed New York's most perfect restaurant, and East Sodi, which serves old world Tuscan fare to tables booked weeks in advance. The secret to their success goes beyond the plate, as the two source nearly every detail themselves. What do your five establishments have in common? a golden thread of design, a sort of minimal, clean, something that is nostalgic maybe, that you feel like I've been here before, and I think that's welcoming. Um, a menu that is flushed with vegetables and salads and, and a lot of tradition. Though they embrace tradition, what led the couple here is far from traditional. While Williams, a California native, trained in Italian kitchens, Sodi, who grew up in Tuscany, started her career in fashion, eventually working for Calvin Klein. I was missing my food because I was traveling a lot. I recognize how much I love my food. But you can just make that at home for yourself. Yeah, no, but I want to share. I want to share my, my joy, my passion, my soul. Yeah. She chased that joy and in 2008, at the age of 45, shifted careers to open her own restaurant. There is always time for a dream, you know, never stop, never stop. Was it worth it? Yeah, look where I am now. <laughs> that includes Williams, who owned a nearby French bistro, Bouvette, and stopped to check out her new neighbor. How did that conversation go? Oh, the conversation didn't happen for a long time, right? Yeah, you know, I was gonna, I wasn't gonna go tell her how great this place is. And then I get up and I'm like, chicken out. And I just go to the bathroom. <laughs> well, so I had to have a lot of dinner there. <laughs> you kept going back. Yeah, I kept going back. <laughs> it worked. The two married in 2015. How many uh, T-bones we got tonight? And now oversee Four. their cafes and restaurants together. But as for who runs the kitchen. We cook together. I don't want to say we, we, we don't. We put um, it together. No, everybody has their corner of the kitchen. <laughs> Go ahead and just say it, read it. Yeah. Okay. We, you, we cannot stir each other's pots. <laughs> you know, like, do you, you know, you're touching my pot? <laughs> like, Ooh. Separate cookware aside, their shared zeal for food and hospitality led to their latest challenge, the Commerce Inn. This neighborhood is pretty reminiscent of old New York. Yeah, Commerce Street is iconic. And this, this cul-de-sac, at the same time, is pretty famous, but quiet. The restaurant, inspired by the streets surrounding it, as well as the Shakers. Organized in the 1700s, the Protestant Christian sect practiced a communal utopian lifestyle with about 4,000 followers at its peak. Today, there are said to be only two Shakers still practicing in the U.S. It started with an old cookbook that was like just full of language and ideas and history, and out of that, we collected other things and ideas, and we knew that this could be a very delicious experience. Yeah. 
heritage recipes focus on straightforward yet hearty ingredients served or preserved at their peak. Dishes like tomato pie layered with farmer's cheese, roasted chicken marinated in a dry rub for 24 hours, a patty melt with caramelized onions and short rib, and potted shrimp. How would you describe potted shrimp? I haven't heard of that before. So potted shrimp is a, a way of sort of preserving. Sometimes it's done in butter, like a confit under butter, and we turn ours into a salad. So it's fresh shrimp with uh, celery and red onion and a little uh, red pepper pickle into it. Sweet corn cakes fresh off the cob are mixed with a spicy pepper jelly. And there's rare bit, toasted bread topped with cheese melted into dark beer. But Williams and Sodi say the most popular dish is a raspberry dessert, the recipe crafted from old cookbooks. This is the mess. <laughs> what makes it a mess? How it's plated, a spoonful of whipped cream and meringue and a spoonful of raspberries and, uh, you know, a little chaos in the bowl. Mm. That mess tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> Even the Commerce Inn's drinks are inspired by early American tastes, like a milk punch, black tea mixed with clarified milk, spices, and rum. Cheers to you, Nancy, for being here with oh, us. Cheers. Cheers. A toast to new ventures in a setting that feels like home, even for first-time visitors. You had said between the five establishments that you have between you that this one stands out. Why is that? Well, I think every time we do it, maybe we get a little better. I mean, every time we design and build a kitchen, we get a little better at it. And um, uh, there's, it, there's a soul in here. Yeah, and not, not and just being the, the most challenging for us. So we feel proud of this uh, result yeah. and, and, the, and the commerce in. Up next, a taste of classic Korean cuisine from another power couple. JP and Ilya Park are the minds behind Michelin star restaurants Auto Boy and Auto Mix, with the latter just named one of the top 10 restaurants in the world by Travel and Leisure magazine. Their latest venture, Naro, features Korean specialties such as soy glazed meatloaf and Korean fried chicken. Jeff Flora sat down with the owners to experience their incredible tasting menu. JP and Elia Park's latest restaurant is smack dab in the middle of Rockefeller Center. A dining destination that looks modern, but serves the opposite. To honor their heritage, the Parks reached back centuries to pull together their menu. Dishes also featured in the Korean cookbook, co-authored by JP. I have to ask, I see the scissors. <laughs> yeah, see, just you know. <laughs> and, there's a, and there's a toothbrush. Yeah, this is uh, another special tool to clean down the abalone. Okay. We started in the kitchen preparing yukjep anche with JP. The first task shucking abalone. That's easier than oysters. Much easier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Was a, yeah. I was a little worried. And also one of the beautiful part of the abalone is the Gorgeous. inside. Look at the shine of yeah, it. Inside of the shell, it's like really shining. Huh? So sometimes a lot of the restaurants using the, this abalone shell as a decoration yeah. for serving with abalone. Cool. So. With the abalone, shrimp, radish, bamboo shoots, pine nuts, finely chopped by hand, and a Korean mustard. All of it served in broth made from brisket. For you, what is Korean food? Uh, I mean, Korean food is like our language. JP worked in kitchens in London, Melbourne, and Seoul before he and Elia moved to New York in 2012. They opened Auto Boy in 2016. That was followed by Auto Mix recently ranked eighth on the world's 50 best restaurants list. Auto is the ancient Korean word for gift. The park's latest restaurant is Naro. It seems like you guys, more than anyone, are really allowing Korean food to have its moment. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, thank you. And that, that's got to feel pretty special. Uh, when I get married to JP, he told me, I want to change the world with my food. I want to change the world. I want to change the world. And I didn't know what that means, but I can feel now with his food, what we love about the Korean cuisine, now the world is changing. They're opening their mind to adopt more Korean food and Korean culture. Huh. At the park's restaurants, whether it's formal or casual, you get a multi-course set menu. Wagyu King. Yes. And everything is authentically Korean. The lighting, bar, even the ceramics. Perfectly designed details from a duo with perfectly designed roles. You're back of the house mm -hmm. and you're front of the house, mm -hmm. basically. Basically. Mm -hmm. That's the split. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's the face of the restaurant and I'm just <laughs> like behind the scene, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It's working out okay. So far, so good. So our work is our art and our show. And uh -huh. our show, JP is our director, the creative director. Uh -huh. I'm the producer. Oh, so nice. he's an artist. And when he says something, I will make it happen. So, so far, good balance. Our menu featured tong piance, mung bean jelly with chilled vegetables and chokun chang. Striped jack, raw fish with cucumbers. And what is this? That is gamjajeon. So gamjajeon is literally means like potato fritter or potato pancake. Almost like kind of hashy brown. It looks, it looks yeah. amazing. <laughs> it's like the yeah, it's like hash brown. Yeah, hashy brown. So we like thinly julienne was slicing the potato and then we just uh, bake it. Almost like hashy brown way. And wow. then serving with the pine nut cream. That's insane. Yeah. This is one of my favorite dish. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. There was also an amazing Wagyu meatloaf baked in a soy glaze and served with mussels and red mustard. It's a lot of the flavors going on, a lot of the lot uh -huh. texture is going on. Amazing. Too. Yeah. Wow. So, so happy to see your smile. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Next, a little KFC, Korean fried chicken served with a rice cake and a chili mayo dipping sauce. This sauce is awesome. Uh -huh. I mean, it's it's awesome not too sauce. Spicy. Yeah. Not too spicy. No, it's not too it's spicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like the really flavor. Flavorful, uh -huh. yeah. For dessert, ganjang pecan, chocolate cake with pecan praline, coffee ice cream, and gold leaf for an added touch of luxury. Washing it all down, an ibchu shrub mocktail with grape, seed lip grove, Korean pepper, prickly ash, and yuzu. It is the kind of food you won't find anywhere else right now. The parks know it and are soaking up every minute of the experience they've been allowed to share. We kind of on a good ride, you know? So. I, it's a damn good ride. <laughs> it's a really good ride. Um, I'm happy for you. Thank, Thank you. you. After the break, shucking oysters with one of New York City's famed chefs. Chef Preston Clark is the corporate executive chef and culinary director at Lure Fish Bar, a nautical-themed New York institution serving the freshest seafood since 2004. I met the chef and experienced firsthand why the restaurant is such a fan favorite. So what you want to do is you want to wedge it right, right there. When getting a lesson in oyster shucking. Right here? Yep. Right there in the hinge so in the back. <laughs> a dull knife just here, won't right here, do. Put it down. Towel goes over it so you don't cut your hand. Okay. Put the knife in the hinge and then rock it back and forth while applying very light pressure. And patience uh, is a must. Steady. You put it right there. In the time it took me to shuck one of these East Coast Beaujolais. A little bit more, keep going, rocking back and forth. Yep. Oh! oh. Chef Preston Clark <laughs> made an entire platter. He's been prepping oysters since he was 12 years old. I just slurp it up. <laughs> One of the many culinary skills he learned from his parents, as well as the joy of pleasing mm. palates. Oh, wow. That is delightful. Uh -huh. Did I... <laughs> oh, that's a big smile. Did I... <laughs> that's a big smile there. <laughs> as the name might suggest, seafood reigns at Lure Fish Bar. Clark was hired as executive chef in 2014 and was promoted to corporate executive chef and culinary director. 
How would you describe it? How would I describe Laura Fish Bar? Unbelievable restaurant, a New York institution. I like to say my father had the institution uptown, and I have the one downtown. <laughs> His dad was pioneering legend Patrick Clark, the first African American chef to run Tavern on the Green and win a prestigious James Beard Award. He died when Preston was just 16 years old. He was a big man, very strict, very stern, but uh, very loving, very joyous. What would surprise people about him? He was kind of a softy. <laughs> he was kind of a softy. I'm the oldest of five. There was a bunch of us always running around, never really lost his temper too much. And I think that was kind of the opposite of some of the people in his professional life understood. <laughs> you said the langosta allá and, and, and dame unos lobster mac and cheese. Yeah, very fresh, huh? A trait Clark admits yeah, he great. shares. Very nice. Let's get it together, huh? And adapted thanks to his culinary mentors, Jean Georges, Michael Lamonaco, and Charlie Trotter. What was it that you did that impressed them? Just persistence and um, you know, willing to keep your keep your head down and keep working, taking direction, and then you know, eventually you see results. Also getting results, making his team feel right at home. One reason he insists on speaking Spanish and is learning French and some Wolof, a widely spoken language in Senegal, too. Communication is key. When you can com communicate with someone and they can understand you, you get the best out of them. And plus, you, you know, they, they don't get upset. They, they can get done what they need to get done and then kind of better themselves on the way. I've had pretty much no turnover. I've had the same guys for the, the 10 years that I've been here. And so that leadership and being able to pass down the knowledge of cooking, all the different types of techniques and all the different foods that we use uh, is super important. Which leads to eye-popping meals like this. Once the food hits the table, I think you eat with your eyes first. Yeah, I, I think I want to dive in there right you now. Go. <laughs> Clark prepared an overflow of customer favorites. What inspired this particular display here? I was looking for a little bit of a wow factor, but I was also looking to make sure I used the entire fish. An Asian snapper over a bed of stir-fried vegetables. So it's a two-pound snapper. Mm. Cut the fillets off, we bread it. Right before we send it out, we douse it with our sauce. Really good. Thank you. Mm. Oysters with pineapple chili relish. Lobster stuffed with blue crab and scallops and garlic chili butter. Sea urchin bucatini. I love this dish. The pasta is al dente. Topped with uni, blue crab, chilies, and lemon juice. I taste the butter and the lemon. Mm. There is lemon in it. Yes, most definitely. Oh, it is delicious. <laughs> most definitely. And crispy tuna fried rice. I think it hits a lot of different notes. Crunchy, spicy, creamy. Mm-hmm, creamy. I want the food to kind of talk to you, not just kind of be monotone. I want it to almost speak back to you, almost like you're having a conversation with the food. I want to create a craving. Once you create a craving, it's food that just people just don't stop eating. It's almost like I'm eating, eating. Oh my goodness, it's over. I, you know, I almost want, I want to order another one. <laughs> the New York Times named Clark one of the 16 black chefs changing food in America. Food that's inspired by the totality of his mentors and experiences, but mostly, he says, by both his mom and dad. Seasoning is really the biggest thing for my father difference between good food and great food. For my mother, she has a, a, a West Indian background, so there's a lot more spice there. He cooks with a lot of heat. Peppers like scotch bonnets and chilies from the Caribbean and Asia. So are people surprised when they get a taste of, of that hot flair? Right. That's kind of the point. We're looking for that pop. Thai chili, lemongrass, kefir lime, lots of lemon juice, lots of uh, lime juice, acid. You point inside? Still, Clark yes, insists his food should not be considered foreign. Like I said, I'm classically French trained, so it starts kind of with the classics, and then you in introduce different flavors from the, from the different countries, and ultimately it's American food. That's, uh, I'm an American chef, uh, and it's American food. That's one. Why is it important to consider it American? Americans come from so many different places, and all of them play a part in a role to make, make the food so great, to make the country so great, to make uh, Lore Fish Bar so great. Clark is celebrating that and the freedom now represented by its second Independence Day, Juneteenth. What does freedom in a culinary space mean to you through that tradition? Having the freedom to work your way up, to have the number one spot and kind of be able to have the freedom to run the restaurant. I would say that I am an American chef who is very much in love with all kinds of cuisine. No one 
on the planet can mess with my collard greens. <laughs> but I am super ecstatic that I'm able to make so, many, so much more than uh, just type of soul food. So freedom to choose. Freedom to choose the type of cuisine you'd like to make and present to the world. And that deserved a toast. Cheers. Cheers to you. <laughs> and here's to being one of 16 of the greatest. <laughs> Thank you. For more stories like these and live coverage of breaking news 24-7, stream us right here on CBS News. I'm Michelle Miller. We'll see you next time for another Helping of the Dish.